Morning, morning, everybody. It's Kane532 here. I am bringing you a tutorial on how to soft mod the Slim PS2. So there's recently been a huge breakthrough as far as technology on soft modding. Seaturt found a exploit within the DVD firmware of Slim model PS2s. This is going to allow you to run unsigned code onto a PS2 Slim provided that your PS2 Slim's DVD firmware is within a certain range. It's a little bit of an involved process, but it is honestly the easiest one, provided you have everything you need. First thing that you're going to need is some sort of DVD burner. Now, this is just a verbatim brand. I bought this at Walmart for, I think, like maybe 20, 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks, somewhere in that neighborhood. It's fairly simple. It's a verbatim brand. Has a single USB. It's as about as basic as you can get. Now this is the Slim PS2 that I've got, and the model in this SCPH79001. So one of the biggest issues that everybody had regarding my last PS2 soft modding video was not everybody had an old school. USB drive, like USB 1.0, such as this, or anything of that sort, and you couldn't get the payload to launch from the USB. Now, just as a proof of concept, I want you all to understand, each of the flash drives that I have right here, all of them work. Just because it is absolutely ridiculous, this is the one that we're going to be using. This is a micro SD card with a 32 gig card, and it's the On Walmart brand. So it is a Walmart branded 32 gigabyte micro SD card inside of a small USB reader. And I installed Freemic Boot with this guy using this exploit. So basically stating we're going to take all of these and we're not going to worry about those. We're only going to be focusing on this guy right here. Now in front I also have a myriad of different memory cards. Now the reason being is I want you to know that this works on pretty much any type of memory card that you can get your hands on. Obviously the best one to use is going to be the official branded PlayStation 2 memory card, but for those of you that don't have access to that, you could even get an off-branded one like this guy here. Now these you can buy on eBay for anywhere between five, six dollars per I have a whole slew of these. I have a 8 megabyte one, 16 megabyte one. I even have up to a 64 megabyte off-branded card. And I have a max memory card. Okay? But the one that I'm going to be installing this exploit on will be the 64 megabytes third-party memory card. Coming down to DVDs, because that's ultimately what this entire exploit is going to be revolving around. The highest recommended one is going to be a DVD minus R. I went to Walmart and I picked up these. These are verbatim branded DVD minus R's. I gotta say, these are kind of shit. The last, I went through probably about six of these in a little pack of ten, and I maybe got two of them to work. So if you can, avoid this brand. I have this right here. Worked on the first shot. It's a Memorex brand, DVD minus R, and this worked great. So that covers it as far as what you're going to need for this exploit. So let's just go over it once more. You'll need a DVD drive. You'll need a slim PS2 on the appropriate DVD firmware. You will need a memory card. It can be any type of memory card. About the only one that it's not going to work on is going to be the 128 megabyte cards because... For whatever reason, Free McBoot does not like to install on anything larger than 64 megabyte. You'll need a flash drive. Any type of flash drive will work, as long as it is formatted to FAT32. You will also need a DVD minus R. Okay, so the next thing that we need to identify is going to be the DVD firmware version on your PS2. To do that, simply put... You're going to turn on your PS2, making sure that there's nothing plugged into it, no existing exploit should you have it, and so on and so forth. Once you get into the main screen, you have your controller plugged in, just click Triangle, and we're going to come down to DVD Player. Notice mine is 3.11U. 
Remember that number. If you got to jot it down, jot it down. But this is going to be absolutely key choosing which part of the exploit we need to use. All right, moving on. Let's go see the software side of things. Over here on the desktop, desktop, if I could speak, side of things, you don't need much. What you need is going to be a copy of the free DVD boot. I'll provide a link in the description for that, as well as the free McBoot installation. You can use any installation pack that you want. Uh, this is one that I've held on to for a number of years. I believe that this is uh, 1.93. You're also going to need a copy of Image Burn. Now, this is free software, so you can Google it, find it, whatever you need. I'll also provide a link for that in the description. First thing that we want to do, we are going to extract the free DVD boot. It's going to create a folder. We're going to go into that folder, go into this one. You can go through the README, and it's going to give you a lot of really good detailed information. This will tell you everything that you need to know. You can also check out porting notes if you're a developer and you want to get a little bit more involved with the process. All we're fo going to focus on is going to be the pre-built ISOs. So right here, we have 3.04, 3.10, 3.11, and then we have a hybrid 3.10 through 3.11. Now this is where the information that you grabbed from your PS2 Slim is going to come into play. So long as you have one of these types of firmwares on your DVD drive, you need to select the appropriate image to burn. For our instances, we are going to be using the 3.11. So just for simplicity's sake, let's go ahead and move that to the desktop we can close out of this. The next important thing that we need to do is to prep our flash drive. Let's go ahead and unpack our Freemuth boot, open that up, and from here we can plug in our flash drive. We can open our flash drive in a new window, and we're going to take all of this and we're just going to dump it right into the root folder of our USB drive. Alright, so once that's done, you can delete both of these because we've already grabbed all the stuff that we needed. And then safely remove your USB drive. The next thing that we need to do is to burn this image. So we're going to use image burn. Open this up. And you want this first option here that says write image file to disk. Click on that and then look for the small browser or browse for file icon up here. Click on this and we're going to navigate to our image. Now in the README, if you look through it, it tells you to burn this at the slowest possible read. Now I can go down to a 1x and that would take a hot minute. But one thing to consider, look in here where it says supported write speeds a 4x to 8x. You have to pay attention to that. I've had the best luck writing it at 8x. Go at the lowest possible speed that you can. Whenever I tried to use 4x on this particular type of DVD in this particular burner, I had failure. So for me, in my experience, I'm going to go with the 8x option. You might have to go through a few DVDs that won't work. So if it doesn't work the first time, adjust your write speed and then try again. If you're still having issues, please do not hesitate to reach out on my Discord channel and I will help you out the best that I can there. Once you do that, all you got to do, click the burn button. And this process does not take too incredibly long, but again, you're going to be looking at anywhere between three to five minutes. So we're going to go ahead and wait for that to finish. So one thing that some people may notice, you'll be sitting on this complete bar right here, sitting at about 100%, and it was sitting there for a good two or three minutes. Uh, don't be alarmed, just let it run through, let it finish its thing. Eventually it will finish and you'll get this operation successfully completed and you'll hear that beautiful little ditty that some of you may remember from Jimmy Neutron.
let's go ahead and we'll throw this into the PS2 and we will wrap up the rest of this installation. Before you know it, you guys will be on the run with all of your modding pleasures and such. Once you have the DVD burned and you got everything else set up, you got your flash drive ready, you got your memory card all set and ready to go, we can go ahead and put everything together and get this console modified. So again, first thing that you're going to need to do, take your memory card. In our case, I have a third party 64 megabyte memory card. Plug that on in. We're going to take our beautiful 32 gigabyte micro SD card, courtesy of Walmart, and our little micro SD card USB reader. We're going to take that and plug that into the USB slot. Now, we are going to take our verbatim. We're going to hope that verbatim isn't going to let us down, or else this, uh, this is going to take a little bit more recording. So take this, pop open your disc tray, put her on in. And once everything is in place, go ahead and turn on your PS2. So long as everything works and you did everything correctly, as soon as it gets past the boot screen, fingers crossed, just like the olden days. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ha, ah, verbatim did not let us down. Look at that. All right, we are in the Ulaunch browser. From here, go ahead, hit the circle button. Go down to mass. That's going to be our flash drive. And you're going to go down to fmcbinstaller.elf. Hit circle. That'll bring you to the installations page. From here... I would highly recommend formatting your memory card. Now this is mainly because it's a third party memory card and secondly because it's always a good idea to install stuff like this on a clean memory card. So you're going to hit yes. Now there are a few other options if you only have one memory card you can click on the dump MC option and you can actually dump all of your save files over to a flash drive and then you can save all your data that way and then I would still recommend to formatting the card you might have good luck enough not formatting the card but again that's going to be at your own peril so once the format is complete go up to install FMCB will be installed onto the memory card in slot 1 continue click yes I'm just going to do the normal but you guys can do whichever type you want. And once that's done, you'll get the installation completed. Hit OK. And you can do one of two different things. You can either exit or simply you can start it back up. Also, my webcam just died for a second there. There it is. Alright, so from here, you are pretty much done. What you can do is you can take out your flash drive, and you can also take out your DVD. As long as you have, if you have another PS2 Slim that is on the same firmware, the same DVD firmware, hold on to this disc. Or if you lose your memory card, hold on to this disc. Pretty much just hold on to the damn disc. But once that's all wrapped up, we can shut the lid, and we can just power cycle it. And if everything worked correctly, you will be greeted with the Free McBoot logo. And here we are, version 1.93. You have the basic stuff on here. I'll go through in another video on how to add different programs onto Free McBoot. But that is it. So I hope this tutorial works for you. If it doesn't, please consider joining the Discord channel. Drop a comment down below if you need any extra help. I will do my very best to get with you. I appreciate you guys sticking with me throughout the years. And I thank you and I definitely look forward to making more videos. As always, happy modding.